Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Lately I've seemed to find a formula of playing games wrong by issuing a challenge, so today I want to play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but without using stamina. In Breath of the Wild, stamina is used for a variety of key tasks performed throughout the game. This includes, but is not limited to, climbing, sprinting, swimming, gliding, charging weapons, and pushing objects. You'd think I could go at least a few minutes into the game before encountering any of these, but you would be wrong. Wait a minute, I just realized, how am I supposed to leave this area? That is a great question past me. You see, the devs made a sort of hidden tutorial, and before you can start exploring the Great Plateau, you have to learn how to climb. Initially, I tried just jumping up as high as I could, and although I could get some good height, it was never enough to reach the top without jumping. There isn't anything to use inside the Shrine of Resurrection, aside from some crates and barrels. I tried to push a crate over to the ledge and quickly made the realization that it required stamina, so I guess that idea is out. Lifting a barrel doesn't use stamina, so I guess what could it hurt to try? Turns out it was as simple as that in a few minutes of messing with the physics. From there I was able to play normally, aside from using a glitch called whistle sprinting to move around faster. To perform this glitch, all you have to do is hold down the whistle button while you run and spam the absolute crap out of the B button. I was then able to activate the tower, beat Magnesis, Cryonis, and Stasis. So all that's left is bombs and no oh, right. Uh, the whole shrine is surrounded by walls, how could I have forgotten that? But uh, you know, at least I can stasis a door. If you want to be very technical, the stamina wheel did appear while doing this trick, but it was close enough that I'm going to go ahead and count it. If you're really worried about this, you can grab a larger metallic item and carry it all the way to the bomb shrine and use the same method to get in. Next up is to beat the bomb trial and watch the old man, I mean, uh, Kim Rome Bosforamo Lala's cutscene. Paraglider gotten, time to glide off the great pl- Yeah, you can't do that. I'm not even going to try to make a joke here. So getting off the great plateau is instant death without gliding, so what do we do? Use the powers of axe magic to throw the axe and unequip a shield. Bam! No fall damage. Now it's time to go to Kakarika Village. Oh yes, horses, I need to get one of those. But wait a minute, it doesn't matter, crap! Let me explain what's going on. At this point, I've been whistle sprinting for over an hour and it's getting very uncomfortable. If I could get myself a horse, I wouldn't have to use stamina and I could finally give my hands a break. But as good as that sounds, I can't get a horse because that too requires stamina. Looks like I'll be whistle sprinting for the next eight hours. We are doing main quest stuff. I need to do this so I can get some better armor in the future. Okay, so now that I've repaired the Sheikah slate and stuff, it's time for Divine Beasts. Varudo requires us to go into bullet time mode to shoot the switches on its back, so that one will be impossible to do. If you actually think I can do Valmetto with this challenge, you're completely delirious and should seek medical help. Vanibori should be possible, though the Yiga clan hideout is going to be much harder. Varudania will be impossible by standard means since we have to save Yunobu, and it's going to be very difficult to reach him without being able to paraglide, or climb, or sprint, or do literally anything that this challenge prevents us from doing. So with that being said, it's time to head to the Gerudo Desert, which means jumping off the Great Plateau again. Yay! Oh snap, he got it first try. How does he do it? He's so good at this game. So then I went south for a long time and I couldn't find somewhere to whistle sprint over the mountains. But along the way, I ran into Ganon's horse for the first time ever. And of course, it's the run that I'm, I'm unable to tame a horse because that's how my luck works. Alright, so with that failure, I guess it's time to jump off the Great Plateau for the third time, but this time with freezing temperatures. After making a pit stop at the Oasis for a memory, I did the Gerudo quest as normal right up into Vani Boris. The Yiga hideout was a lot harder since I couldn't sprint, but I still beat it in three tries. However, the real threat to the run was upon me. The rotating stone switch... things. Oh, 
Okay, so these require stamina to push, and after failing to find a way around them entirely, I ended up pushing them with a chest and that actually went pretty well. That was the only issue I ran into, aside from forgetting the puzzles in the Divine Beast. Thunderblade took me three tries since I was pretty unprepared, but it still wasn't that bad of a fight. Now that Vane Boris is done, let's head to the complete opposite side of the map. The only potential issue I saw with Varudanya was saving Yunobu, and as it turns out, yeah, this was completely impossible by just moving around normally. To beat this one, we're gonna have to think outside of the realms of physics. Take one minecart, place another one on top of it, realize you don't know how to make a flying machine, research for 10 minutes on how to make a flying machine, take flight, die because you don't have level 2 fireproof, get level 2 fireproof, make another flying machine, and fly to Yunobu. Whew, that only took 30 minutes. Time to get to Rodanya. Entering and beating Rodanya was really no different other than the whole no sprinting thing. I was also unable to whistle sprint for a while because Yunobu didn't like my idea of signaling him with a wink. Real quickly, I'd just like to mention how amazing Breath of the Wild's puzzles are. I kinda damage boosted through the fire during Virudanya to activate one of the pedestals, and this was definitely not the intended way. Anyway, Rudanya done, Goron saved, time to fight Calamity Ganon. Reaching Hyrule Castle was a little bit harder than I thought it would be. Whistle sprinting once again caused problems since it would attract the guardians to me faster. Regardless, I was unable to run at full speed, so dodging all the lasers was much more difficult. Eventually, I made it into Hyrule Castle, but new challenges awaited me there. I wasn't able to climb up waterfalls or climb up any of the walls, for that matter. This meant for the first time ever, I had to follow the main path around the castle. My first objective was to reach the dining hall so that I could cook some things, and it took me forever to make it there thanks to an abundance of malice blocking my path. But eventually, I was able to cook all my food. It was now time for the final fight. Yeah, so I was totally unprepared for the fight and frankly didn't care to whistle sprint around the whole map preparing myself to beat the game. So now we're back to the original question. Can you beat Breath of the Wild without using stamina? Yes, and actually there's still a lot you can accomplish. I was able to still do a ton of shrines and I didn't really go out of my way to complete a bunch of them. Was I prepared to actually finish the game? <laughs> Not at all. Am I going to take the time to prepare myself to finish the game? Not at all. And with that, I would like to thank you all for watching. Remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you all next time.